Good morning and welcome to uh, today's Finance Committee meeting. My name is Councilmember Daniel Drum. I am the chair of the committee. We've been joined today by Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, Councilmember Adrian Adams, Councilmember Keith Powers, Councilmember Barry Grudenchik, and Councilmember Steve Matteo. Today the committee will be voting on 11 items. Intro 882 relating to the commercial rent tax, three resolutions relating to the Banking Commission's recommendation on interest rates, and seven Article 11 property tax exemptions. Let's start with Intro 882, introduced by request of the Mayor, which would change the initial date of eligibility for the Small Business Tax Credit against the commercial rent tax. Last session, the Council approved Local Law 254 of 2017, which created, which created a credit against the CRT that was to be provided to small businesses earning less than $20 million per year and that paid less than $550,000 annually in rent beginning on July 1, 2018. At the time the bill was negotiated, over the Council's objections, the administration insisted that the start of the credit be aligned with the fiscal year, rather than the CR tax year, which runs from June 1st through May 31st. For purposes of administrative ease and to avoid taxpayer confusion, the administration has now come around to the Council's position and is requesting that we move the initial date of eligibility to June 1, 2018, the start of the next CRT tax year. Next, we have the resolutions that would set certain interest rates for fiscal 2019. Every year, the Banking Commission provides recommendations to the Council relating to the discount received by property owners who pay their property taxes early and the interest rates paid by property owners who pay their property taxes late. For fiscal 2019, the Banking Commission has made the following recommendations. A 1.5% discount rate for those who pay their property taxes early. A 7% interest rate for the late payment of property taxes on properties with an assessed value of $250,000 or less, which is approximately 95% of all property in the city, and an 18% interest rate for the late payment of property taxes on properties with an assessed value of more than $250,000. After careful consideration of the Banking Commission's submission to the Council, the Council is recommending that the interest rates be approved as set forth by the Banking Commission's recommendations. As per state law, the interest rates for the late payment of water and sewer bills will match the rates set for the late payment of property taxes. A representative of the Banking Commission is here to answer any questions that we may have on the interest rates. Last, we have the land use items. The first is S.E. Jeffries Apartments in Councilmember Levine's district in Manhattan, which will provide a full 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to support the preservation of 64 units of affordable housing. The second is in Woodhouse in Councilmember Rodriguez's district in Manhattan, which would provide a partial 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to support the preservation of 94 units of affordable rental housing. The third is Rockaway Village in Councilmember Richard's district in Queens, which would provide a full 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to support the construction of 457 units of affordable rental housing. The remaining four items are in Councilmember Salamanca's district in the Bronx, and they are Lafayette Morrison, which would provide a 32-year Article 11 tax exemption, part of which would be full and retroactive, and part of which would be partial moving forward to preserve 900 units of affordable rental housing. 1314 Seneca Avenue, which would provide a partial 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to support the preservation of 59 units of affordable rental housing. Aquinas Deacon Juan Santos, which would amend a prior resolution approving an Article 11 tax exemption that the Council approved in May 2015 to correct certain technical errors. And 943 to 947 Teller Avenue, which would amend a prior resolution approving an Article 11 tax exemption that the Council approved in December 2016 to extend the length of the tax exemption from 35 years to 40 years. Each of the Council members are supportive of the projects in their districts. Representatives from HPD are here to answer any questions that we may have on any of the land use items. Those are all of today's items. Um, are there any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, Chair Drum, I want to thank you for all this. Um, 
I just want to note, um, I guess I could have saved this for the vote, but appreciation to the staff for going through the interest rate uh, information and appreciation to the Department of Finance um, and the Banking Commission for you know providing the information to the council this is I think the second year that we've had the information and it um, encouraged a very robust debate uh, among the council members and increase awareness of the um, of the details, and so I really just want to thank you for that, and thank the council and the staff in particular for um, bearing with all the questions that it evoked. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Now we are going to hear some testimony on some of the legislation, uh, and I'm going to call people up in panels, and I just want to remind everyone that they are limited to two minutes apiece. And first, we're going to hear from Mary Bruce uh, from Nixon Peabody. Just to hit that button. I'm here just to testify on the Article 11 for Inwood Houses, not on the proposed. For what? Uh, for, I'm here to testify on an Article 11, just if there are any questions from the City Council for Inwood Houses. I believe that's further down in the list. Are you here to end? <laughs> so that's fine. I couldn't hear you, I'm sorry, it's a little echoey in oh, here. sorry, Councilman. So um, are you here to um, answer questions or to give testimony? Just to answer questions if okay, there Okay, so, so you're not giving testimony? No. Okay, so then you don't need to be seated then. Okay, thank you. All right, any questions on that? All right, now, I'm gonna call up other people who are here today. The first one is Johanna Hogstad, I believe. Okay. Alex Hecht. 32 BJ, Phoebe Shell, 32 BJ, Rom Wade, 32 BJ, and um, can we get another chair, um, Sergeant, and Willer Rojas, or Rojas, 32 BJ. Okay, and we have been joined by Councilmember Gibson, Cumbo, and Cohen. Okay, would you like to start? Yeah, my name is Jonathan Hogstead. I am a, uh, I'm with SEIU Local 32 BJ. Uh, we have uh, been engaging Phipps houses for over two years now. Uh, when uh, Phipps houses workers came to us, uh, workers were dealing with uh, issues of homelessness. Uh, most workers were on Medicaid. I'm gonna read from the op-ed of one of the workers that couldn't be here, uh, who was work living in a homeless shelter for years with his daughters while working at, at Phipps Houses, a, a supposed uh, nonprofit, mission-driven organization. Uh, so this is from Carmelo de Jesus. Every day for the past four years, I've woken up with the same thought. Is this the week that my girls and I will finally have a home of our own? I'm the father of three daughters who are 24, 18, and 14, and the grandfather of a nine-month-old baby, a uh, baby girl. We have been living in a homeless shelter in the Bronx for the last three years. For the last two years, I've worked as a porter doing cleaning and some very basic repairs at an affordable housing complex called Cortland Corners that was developed by Phipps Houses, a nonprofit affordable housing developer in the Bronx. Still, I have not been able to get my family out of the shelter. Living in a shelter and working in an affordable housing complex, I know that many New Yorkers struggle to find affordable housing. I have learned that what counts as affordable housing is only affordable if you have a good job. I take a lot of pride in my job, and I like the people I work with, but I do not make enough to find decent affordable housing for my family of five. In fact, 
I learn way too, I earn way too little working at Corlin Corners to afford an apartment there. That's because my employer only pays me uh, 13 an hour. When I started in June of 2015, I was only making 11.50 an hour. But less than a year later, I was promoted to lead porter and I got a 150 raise. I still don't receive any meaningful benefits. This was in last year. This is not enough for us to get by. My girls are relying on me. My paycheck isn't enough to cover food, diapers, and rent on a decent apartment for five people. With no meaningful health benefits at my job, we also have to rely on Medicaid for our health care. My daughters have big dreams. The youngest two love animals and both dream of going to college and becoming veterinarians. I wonder how I will help them pay for college. They also dream that we'll move into an apartment of our own where, we can, where they can have a pet, maybe a bunny or a dog. Uh, but right now, even a small thing like a pet feels completely out of reach. It doesn't feel good to work so hard for so little. When I first heard about this job, I jumped on it quick because it was close to where I live, and I thought it would be a good job that would get us out of the shelter soon. I really like the idea of working in a place where I could help other working families like my own have a nice place to live. The company even says that it works towards a New York City in which no one is caught in a cycle of poverty. But here I am almost two years later working in one of their developments. My family and I are trapped in a cycle of poverty and homelessness that we can't get out of unless I earn higher wages and better benefits. My coworkers and I recently joined together to fight for better jobs at Cortland Corners. I'm optimistic that we'll be able to get higher wages with regular increases, good health insurance and retirement benefits, and access to training that will allow me to advance in my career. We're asking Phipps Houses to commit to being a responsible developer and making sure they're creating good jobs. I want this for my side at Cortland Corners and I want it for other workers in the Bronx and throughout the city who are also struggling to make ends meet. This is the way that we can break the cycle of poverty and provide a bright future to our kids and grandkids. Carmelo de Jesus, uh, Porter at Phipps Houses in the Bronx. Okay, thank you. Next, please. Good morning, Chair Drum and members of the Finance Committee. Uh, my name is Alex Hecht. I'm here with SCIU Local 32 BJ. And I'd like to read into the record an open letter from Bronx elected officials to Phipps Houses CEO Adam Weinstein. Dear Mr. Weinstein, we, elected officials representing the borough of the Bronx, are writing to you to express our concerns about Phipps Houses' recent actions in our borough. Phipps Houses has a long and valued history of building high quality affordable housing for our constituents. That's why we've been so alarmed to hear from another long-term partner in the responsible development of the Bronx, 32BJ SEIU, that Phipps has been undermining job standards for building service workers. At the largest of Phipps Houses' newer complexes in the Bronx, mm -hmm. workers have struggled for years to get by on wages as low as $11.79 an hour. Many have relied on Medicaid for themselves and their families with no meaningful health coverage or retirement benefits from their employer. One worker spent years living in a homeless shelter while working in the building. In fact, Phipps Houses receive significant government subsidies. These subsidies assume that Phipps will use taxpayers' money responsibly. When workers are struggling to support their families while Phipps CEO brings home more than three quarters of a million dollars a year in total compensation, Phipps violates the trust of taxpayers and their representatives. Our borough is in the midst of a building boom and an affordable housing crisis. We've been working hard to ensure that the new developments in the Bronx include significant amounts of affordable housing, but we also need good jobs. Building service workers have fought hard to establish a wage and benefit rate that allows them to support a family in the Bronx. We're calling on you, Phipps Houses, to return to your organization's roots and ensure that across the Bronx, workers earn family-sustaining wages and benefits. Sincerely, Rafael Salamanca, Andy Cohen, Fernando Cabrera, Richie Torres, Andy King, Luis Sepulveda, Carmen Arroyo, Jose Rivera, Latoya Joyner, Mark Jonai, Jamal Bailey, Ruben Diaz Sr., and Jose Serrano Jr. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please. Uh, good morning. My name is Will Rojas. Uh, I'm reading a statement that 32BJ made in July regarding the Rockaway Village development. Uh, we still believe this is true. As you have heard, we think this rezoning can do a lot of good for the neighborhood but we have been concerned to hear that the rezoning may be facilitating a deal to put the largest parcel, the site to be designed, 
as an urban renewal area directly in the hands of FIBS houses instead of going through an open, transparent, competitive process. 32BJ believes that any developer in the DFR URA should be selected through a transparent process. Such a process would guarantee, such a process would be guaranteed if the city purchased the land either through a negotiated sale or through eminent, through eminent domain. Once the city acquires the land, it will have to follow the public Euler process to subsequently dispose of it to a developer. At that point, there would be opportunity for public input and, and for stakeholders to weigh in on the track records and plans of the applicants seeking to develop the site. If the city does not intend to acquire the land, it can still guarantee an open process for the selection of, the de of a developer. Once the site is, des is designated as an urban renewal area, the city will have the ability and responsibility to intervene to implement its urban renewal plan. This plan should include uh, commitment to transparency and community input in the selection of developers through a competitive process. The Far Rockaway community deserves a chance to weigh in on who will develop this enormous parcel, which has the capacity to be a tremendous resource for the community. 32BJ does not believe FIBS would be selected to develop this site through a more open process. In recent years, FIBS has undermined job standards for building service workers in New York City. The DFR URA Offer, area offers a unique opportunity to create good jobs and affordable housing for Far Rockaway residents on a large scale. An open process would allow the community to prioritize selecting a developer committed to the creation of both quality jobs and quality affordable housing. Thank you. Next, please. Um, I'm here from 32BJ to read uh, another letter into the, rec uh, into the record signed by 24 elected officials uh, to deliver a message to FIP CEO Adam Weinstein. Dear Mr. Weinstein, we write to you as members of the New York City Council to express our concerns about FIP's House's recent record. New York City is in the midst of an affordable housing crisis that we need to come together to help solve. As one of the largest developers of affordable housing in the city, FIPS has a crucial role to play. But FIPS can't play this role if the building service jobs at its affiliated buildings pay poverty wages. We have been alarmed to hear that at newer FIPS buildings, workers have been struggling to make ends meet and find housing. At FIPS, two most prominent new complexes in the Bronx, Cortland Corners and Via Verde, workers are struggling to get by. For years, many workers at Cortland Corners made under $12 an hour and received no meaningful health and retirement benefits. Many relied on Medicaid for health coverage for themselves and their families, and one worker spent years living in a homeless shelter while working at the building. The same irresponsible contractor who employed these workers at Cortland Corners continues to employ workers at Via Verde, where workers face similar low wages, as little as $12.65 an hour, and unaffordable health insurance offers. Meanwhile, executive compensation has soared. New York's housing crisis stems not just from rising housing prices, but also from employers that pay poverty wages. To be a real partner with the city, FIPS must commit to addressing both sides of this crisis. We are calling on you to return to your organization's roots and ensure that across the city, building service workers at FIPS affiliated buildings earn family sustaining wages and benefits that allow them to continue to call New York City home. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Yes, good morning. My name is Ron Wade. I'm a member of SEIU 32PJ Executive Board. As you know, 32PJ members maintain, clean, and provide security services in residential buildings all across the five boroughs, including ones like the proposed development at 1675 Westchester. Throughout, through our jobs, we receive access to high quality health care and can save for retirement. I believe that is all workers in New York should have the same opportunity. This is why I'm here today. The way workers are treated at FIPS buildings across the city varies significantly. In a number of their existing properties, FIPS has created high quality building service jobs for workers like me at these buildings. FIPS ensures supers, porters, and handy persons receiving family sustained salaries, good health, and retirement benefits. But at other more recent open FIPS buildings, building service workers report making wages well be below their area standard with, uh, with receiving no meaningful benefits. We know one worker who lived with his family in a shelter for five years uh, while working at Fisk Building. I know how hard it is to work for people like to make it in the city. 
As housing prices have risen, my union brothers and sisters have struggled to stay in their homes. Thanks to our union jobs, we are able to do that. But I can't imagine how I would be able to keep my family here if I had to pay out of pocket for health insurance. I definitely would not be able to save for retirement. 32BJ members know how important it is for affordable uh, housing developments can build it, be in our city. But it's not helpful if the job they create adds to the housing crisis instead of helping to solve it. We want to work with FIBS to make sure that employment practices at their buildings help further their mission instead of undermining it. But if FIBS isn't committed to this, we, do, we don't think the City Planning Commission should support their project. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you to this panel for coming in and for giving your testimony. Uh, I'm going to call the next panel up, and then we'll make comments at the end. Thank you. And the next panel will be Suzanne Kahn from 32BJ, Eugenia Kim, 32BJ, Carmelo Vasquez, 32BJ, Monica Cruz, 32BJ. And I'll also do Trey Allen, 32BJ. We're missing a few people on the panel. Suzanne Kahn, okay. Eugenia Kim, okay. Carmelo Vasquez, okay. Uh, Monica Cruz, okay. Trey Allen, is that uh, uh, Ty Ray? I'm sorry, is it Ty, Ty Ray? Okay, so we just got to make sure we have the, the forms correct here. And what's your name, ma'am? I'm sorry, I can't, can you put the mic on? My name is Bruni Leon. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so um, one, two, three, four, and we can bring up one more person. Okay. Um, Ryris Martins. R A I R I S. Okay. Well, they'll give them another chance if when they come back there. Uh, Lori Garcia. Eugenia. Okay. So let's do Eugenia then. Okay. All right. Would you like to start? <laughs> this, oh no. uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Suzanne. I'm here to speak about the Article 11 for Rockaway Village. Good quality building service jobs are a pathway to the middle class for many New Yorkers. SEIU 32BJ, the largest property service workers union in the country, represents 80,000 building service workers in New York City. We have fought hard for an industry standard wage and benefits package that allows building service workers to raise families in this city. All 32BJ members receive a family sustaining wage and benefit that includes employer paid health care along with a guaranteed benefit retirement pension plan, a 401k and access to continuing education and legal services. We believe these are the kinds of jobs that foster prosperous local economies and these are the kind of jobs that Far Rockaway needs and that can be created at Rockaway Village. Unfortunately, these are not the kind of jobs that have been created at Phipps complexes in recent years. For years, FIPS seemed to recognize that it helped New Yorkers build strong communities, not only by constructing affordable housing, but also by ensuring all FIPS-affiliated entities created good jobs for building service workers. But FIPS' commitment to good jobs has faltered under the leadership of its current CEO, Adam Weinstein. We know that workers at many of FIPS' older buildings, even buildings not represented by 32BJ, earn family-sustaining wages. At Weinstein era FIPS affiliated buildings, however, we have met workers who bring home only poverty wages. 
For example, since August 2016, SEIU 32BJ has been working with employees at Phipps's Cortland Corners Complex in the Bronx who have come together to improve their wages and benefits. At Cortland Corners, when we started working with the workers, they were making um, only poverty wages and receiving no meaningful benefits. They had, many had been making as little as 11.79 an hour um, for over three years and had received only a single raise since being hired. Um, many were relying on Medicaid, and as you already heard, one was living in a shelter. As a nonprofit affordable housing developer, FIPS received significant subsidies from New York City. Um, these subsidies assume that FIPS will use taxpayer money at responsible, yet while workers have struggled to get by at Corlin Corners, the pay of FIPS top, top executives have grown quickly. Uh, so, um, in, yeah, in conclusion, a developer who's allowed poverty jobs to be created in the buildings, in built, its buildings, runs counter to the goals of the New York City Housing, or the Housing New York Plan, and we don't think they should continue to get city subsidies. How much does the executive make? Um, it's, uh, sorry. According to the 2015 uh, 990, which is the most recent available to us, it was over 800000 a year. $800,000? In, in total compensation. Yeah. Wow. $800,000. Unbelievable. Good morning. My name is Cabello Vasquez, and I'm a representative of 32BJ. I'll be reading on behalf of uh, worker Carmelo de Jesus. Hi, everyone. I'm Carmelo de Jesus. I'm a lifelong New Yorker, a porter at Phipps Development, a father and a grandfather. I also live in a shelter. I have been at my job for the last two years. When I got the job, I was living in the shelter with my three girls for almost a year. I jumped at the chance because I thought it would help me get us into our own home. When I started, I was making only $11.50 an hour. When I got a promotion, then I got a promotion, and now I make $13 an hour. I still haven't been, it still hasn't been enough to get us out of the shelter. I'm supporting five people, my daughters, myself, and my baby granddaughter on my salary. That's not easy. My two youngest daughters are in high school. My paycheck isn't enough to cover food, diapers, and rent on a decent apartment for five people. With no meaningful health benefits at my job, we also have to rely on Medicaid for our health care. I started working with 32BJ because my daughters and I have dreams. My daughters want to go to college and become veterinarians. Before that, they want to move into an apartment where we can have a pet. I want that for them. And I also want to be sure that when I go, I leave something behind for them. I'm hopeful that things are changing for me, but I want to make sure that other workers don't go through what I have been through. FIPS should commit to creating good jobs at this development before it goes up. Otherwise, more workers will get stuck like my family did. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please. I'm Monica Cruz. My union, 32BJ, has been engaged community across New York. I've outfit an irresponsible developer for over two years. I'm going to read for an petition that community members have signed to support good job at Fit House. Fit House is currently seeking approval for two proposed developments in the Bronx that require their purported property to be resigned. We believe that in recent years, Fit House has done a disservice to our communities by creating bad jobs in the Bronx. Going so far, as to work with a contractor that pays employee a fit a filler complex poverty wage and not meaningful benefits. Meanwhile, in the last decade, the salary of the top executive have ballooned. CEO Adam Wimston received 760000 in total compensation in 2015 while workers at Fit Affiliate Complex built under his leadership struggle to make ends meet, many of them resorting to medical, Medicaid or other society insurance to care for their family health. We believe this is an acceptable behavior on the part of the developer that received significant subsidies from New York and forgot federal income taxes due their 501 status. 
while benefiting from taxpayer dollars. Fed has a moral obligation to ensure those dollars are well spent. We urge Council Member Salamanca, Council Member Palma, and all our represent in New York City and state government to oppose Fed plans in the Bronx unless it commit to creating high quality jobs at all its new developments. The Bronx need affordable housing and good jobs. The city shall only work with developers who are committed to creating both. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Yes, uh, good morning. My name is, like I said, Bruni Leon. And I want to tell you that I have worked as a porter in the Bronx for the last five years. During that time, I have also been member of the 32BJ. The good wages and benefits I get through my job have helped me to support my family. For, my, for me, being a union member has also been an opportunity for advancement. Through the union, I also get to take all sorts of class to improve my skills on the job. Those courses have helped me to advance in my job. I think all workers should have opportunities. That is why I am here today. I know how hard it is for working people to make it, to make it in the city, to make it this in the city. It is important that affordable housing developers can build in our city, but it is not helpful if the jobs they created add to the housing crisis instead or helping to solve it. All workers deserve the opportunity to, the opportunity I have had. There is no reason that workers doing the same job that I do shouldn't earn good wages and benefits. 32BJs want to work with Pepins to make sure that the job at their building help further their mission instead of undermining it. But if Pippin is not committed to this, we don't think the project should be moved forward. We all as community, and uh, we should be moving forward. Thank you. Hi, good morning. My name is Eugenia Kim. Uh, I'm a member of SEO 32 BJ. Uh, and as you know, 32BJ uh, members maintain, clean, uh, and provide security services at various residential buildings throughout the five boroughs, um, including some at Phipps Development. Uh, through our jobs, we uh, receive access to high-quality health care, uh, we and we are able to save for retirement. I believe that all workers in New York should have the same opportunities, and that's why I'm here today. Uh, the way workers are treated at Phipps buildings across the city varies greatly. The number, uh, in a number of its existing properties, uh, FIPS has created some high quality building service jobs uh, for workers. Certain uh, porters, supers, and handy persons receive family sustaining salaries and good health care. Uh, but at other more recently opened FIPS sites and developments, uh, they're making wages well below the area standard and receiving no meaningful benefits. We know one worker uh, who has lived in a family shelter for years while working in a Phipps building, and I believe that's unacceptable. I know how hard it is for working people to make it in this city. As housing prices have risen, union brothers and sisters have struggled to stay in their homes. Thanks to our union jobs, however, we're able to do that. But I can't imagine uh, how I'd be able to keep, uh, how families are able to stay here while having to pay out of pocket for health insurance and no meaningful chance to save for their future. Uh, I definitely want to be able to do that and provide for my family members one day. 32BJ members know how important it is that affordable housing developers uh, should be able to build in this city, but also um, it is not helpful when the jobs they create and add, add to the housing crisis. Instead, we want to work to help solve it. Uh, in order uh, for FIPS to build uh, sustainably and develop, and develop in a way that is responsible, we believe, uh, that they should have uh, good wages and good uh, retirement savings benefits. Thank you so much. 
Thank you very much, and thank you to this panel. I think it's absolutely disgusting that the uh, director is making close to $800,000 and that some of your workers actually have to live in shelters. It's just totally unacceptable. Uh, thank you, and we're going to call up another panel. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Lori Garcia. Ariete Arama. Carlos. Worsic, Fran, Fran Streich, and Liz Boyd. Okay, so can you just give me your names? Uh, Lori Garcia and and Okay. Let's go to the other panel. Um Alina Karim. No. Ryrus Martins and Tyre Allen. T-Y-R-A-E. Okay, then that appears to be, yeah. Uh, would you like to start? Okay. Sure. Good morning. Uh, I'll be reading from a petition uh, from Kips Bay Court Building Service Workers uh, demanding Phipps Houses sell responsibly. Phipps Houses has announced plans to put Kips Bay Court on the market. Press reports estimate that Phipps could make as much as 700 million through this sale. We, the building service workers at Kips Bay Court, currently have good union jobs that pay a family sustaining wage and provide health and retirement benefits. In recent years, workers with good, job, good union jobs have found that when a building is sold, the new owners sometimes fail to ret retain the income building service workers or maintain the workers' wages and benefits. We're asking that FIPS commit to finding a buyer who is committed to maintaining a high quality, sorry, high quality union building service jobs, as well as the building services that are important to Kips Bay tenants and workers. We demand that FIPS houses sell Kips Bay court to a responsible owner. And this petition is signed by, I don't have an exact number, but pages and pages and pages of uh, workers and uh, tenants. Thank you. You have a copy of that? Yeah, yeah, well, you can yeah I'd love to just to have that petition. because that's good testimony too. Thank you. Yes? I'm sorry, Keith, uh, Councilmember Keith Power. And I, I don't actually represent Kips Bay Towers, but I represent the area just adjacent to it and nearby and walk past it every single day and certainly care about the people that are working there and the jobs there. So I, I'll certainly have to talk to the local member about it as well, but certainly support ensuring that in any sale the jobs are, are preserved, they're good paying jobs, and that a new buyer is committed to maintaining those jobs. So. I'll talk, to, I'll talk to your folks after about any way to be supportive to that and something I care about in any sale as well. So thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Okay, would you like to start? Sure. Good morning, my name is Liz, and I'm here with SEIU Local 32BJ. As you know, Phipps Houses is the largest affordable housing nonprofit developer in the city. It has a stated mission of helping the people of New York City build healthy, more prosperous communities. But we know that some workers in Phipps buildings in the Bronx are not prospering. Workers at Phipps complexes are relying on Medicaid for healthcare and one lived in the shelter. This isn't right. 
32 BJ members know how important it is that affordable housing developers can build in our city, but it's not helpful if the jobs they create add to the housing crisis instead of helping to solve it. We want to work with FIPS and other developers to make sure that employment practices at their buildings help further their mission instead of undermining it. But if developers aren't committed to this, we don't think the council should support their projects. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I see we've been joined uh, at the table by another person. Can you identify yourself for the record, please? Good morning. My name is Alina Karim, and I'm a researcher from SEIU Local 32BJ. 32BJ members maintain, clean, and provide security services in residential buildings all across the five boroughs. Through their jobs, they receive access to high quality health care and can save for retirement. I believe that all workers in New York should have the same opportunities. This is why I'm here today. The way workers are treated at Phipps buildings across the city vary significantly. In a number of its existing properties, Phipps has created high quality building service jobs for workers, and at these buildings, Phipps ensures supers, porters, handy persons, gives them family sustaining wages, good health and retirement benefits. But at other Phipps buildings, Building service workers report making wages well below the area standard while receiving no meaningful benefits. I know how hard it is for working people to make it in this city. As housing prices have risen, my union brothers and sisters have struggled to stay in their homes. Thanks to union jobs, they are able to do that, but I can't imagine how they would be able to keep their families here if they had to pay out of pocket for health insurance. People would definitely not be able to save for retirement as well. 32 BG members know how important it is for affordable housing developers to build in their city, but it's not helpful if the jobs they create add to the housing crisis instead of helping to solve it. We want to work with FIPS and other developers to make sure that employment practices at these buildings help further their mission instead of undermining it. But if developers aren't committed to this, we don't think the council should support these projects. Thank you. Thank you very much to this panel. Um, you know, um, I have to say that I am not happy about how this all went down. And, um, you know, I am very disgusted by the actions of FIPS. Um, you know, I have heard these stories about FIPS before. Uh, there have been other issues. Uh, I myself have been supportive of the efforts of 32BJ to get justice for their workers in this um, situation and in other situations as well. So I'm just going to say to you right now that um, this will not happen again. Um, I, I, we will continue to fight FIPS and we will continue to fight for justice for your workers moving forward. I am very upset about what has happened here. And, um, and I thank you very much for coming in and for giving your testimony. Thank you. Thank you. And we just want to see there, if, there, if any of the other people showed up. Uh, Ty Ray Allen. No. Ryris Martins. No. Okay, Carlos Orsic, I think it is. Carlos is here. Arieta Rama. And Fran. Okay. All right. Uh, you can begin, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm reading this. Just turn the mic on. The red light has to be on. I think it's on. Okay, yeah. Um, dear Mrs. Mr. Weinstein, we, the elected officials representing the borough of the Bronx, are writing you to express our concerns about FIPS housing, recent actions in our borough. FIPS Houses has a long and valued history of building high quality, affordable housing for our constituents. Th that is why we have. Uh, being so alarmed to hear from another long-term partner in the responsible development of the Bronx 32 BJ SEIU that uh, FIPS has been undermining job standards for building service workers. At the largest of FIPS houses near complexes in the Bronx, workers have struggled for years to get by on wages as low as 11.79 an hour. 
Many have relied on Medicaid them for themselves and their families with no meaningful health coverage or retirement benefits from their employer. One worker spent years living in a homeless shelter while working in the building. In fact, FIPS housings receive significant government subsidies, and these subsidies assume that FIPS uh, will use taxpayers' money responsibly. When workers are struggling to support their families while FIPS CEO brings home more than three quarters of a million dollars a year in total compensation, FIPS violates the trust of taxpayers and their representatives. Our borough is in the midst of a building room and an affordable housing crisis. We have been working hard to ensure that the new developments in the Bronx include significant amounts of affordable housing, but we also need good jobs. Building service workers have fought hard to establish a wage and benefit rate that allows them to support a family in the Bronx. We are calling on you to return to your organization's roots and ensure that across the Bronx, workers earn uh, family-sustaining wages and benefits. Uh, the Bronx can only thrive if we create good jobs and affordable housing. Thank you very much. And again, horrible, horrible behavior on the part of FIPS. It's just totally unacceptable. Thank you for coming in and for giving testimony. Thank you. I, I'm sorry, I need to know your name again for the record. It's okay, Haidis. <laughs> What's your name? Haidis. Last name? Martinez. Martinez, okay. All right, we're, go we're going to now just give, wait a few minutes for the members to gather, and then we will proceed. Okay, we're now going to proceed with the vote. I'm going to ask the clerk, Billy Martin, to call the roll. Billy Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote. Committee on finance, all items are coupled. Chair Drum. Very, very reluctantly, yes. Gibson. Pass. 
Cohen. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I have to say on, on LU 99 Rockway Village, uh, you know, the, the chair used discussed it, and I, I really feel like that is my uh, visceral reaction here. And, you know, when I have two friends who are having a dispute, I really try to stay neutral and encourage them to work out their dispute, which is what I feel like I've done here. But I feel terribly disrespected by Phipps Houses. I've invested an inordinate amount of time in trying to bring resolution here uh, to no avail. And, and I think the proof is in the fact that, you know, I serve on this committee. I've served in land use in the past. Uh, we've supported the development of a myriad of uh, affordable development projects. Uh, and this issue has not come up except with FIPS. Uh, so to me, it, it, that, that seems irrefutable that we can sit here and, ha and produce, you know, thousands of units of affordable housing and not have this issue take place except with FIPS makes me believe, you know, and 32BJ obviously involved in many of those developments, makes me believe that it's, it's FIPS's fault. And, and again, FIPS has a good reputation and I hate to see it so tarnished here, uh, but that's how I feel. I, I really, if this project were in my district, I would not support it and I would not vote for it. But uh, 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 in light of the fact that the local member does support it, I am going to support it, so uh, I, I vote aye. Thank you, Council Member. Please continue with the roll. Matteo. Uh, no one preconsidered 360, aye and the rest. Combo. I pass. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I'd like to associate my comments with those of Council Member Cohn and with yours as well, Chair Drum. This is a very disappointing situation. Um, I stand in support of my brothers and sisters at 32BJ. Really appreciate you all coming out here today to describe in detail what's going on. Um, it's why everyone here is, uh, I speak for the two people who I just mentioned, but you know, really disappointed where 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 this has landed. And for me, this falls, you know, but by the same token, FIPS is doing very low AMIs, which we support. Um, they're setting aside 45 units for homeless ho households, and their highest AMI is at 100 percent. So. Um, I mean, for me, this falls back to my fights on the human service contracts. If the government is not going to pay an organization to pay its workers a real livable wage, um, I think government is falling short. So, um, you know, in the same way that I say that I appreciate the de Blasio administration for at least giving. 40 million of the 200 million that's needed for human service contracts. Um, I am going to vote aye on this, but with uh, the hope that, you know, an encouragement that 32BJ continue its fight and that, um, you know, people continue to work with Phipps Houses to get them to do the right thing. I really appreciate all of you coming out here today. I vote aye on all. Grodenczyk. Pass. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, ma'am. I, too, uh, concur with the chair's remarks uh, to my friends at 32BJ. I stand with you um, as I uh, have in the past. I am, too, uh, torn by this situation and extremely, extremely disgusted um, by what I've heard today, the disparity of treatment is absolutely horrendous um, among the workers that do report uh, to work for FIPS. Um, I, I think the conditions are de deplorable. Whenever we sit here and have to say that some people are actually living um, with poverty wages are, and are in shelters, no one should ever have to be in that position. Um, I, too, uh, like I said, I'm torn. We know that um, through my colleague Donovan Richards, the project, a Rockaway Village, has been underway for quite a number of years. And as one who, uh, quite frankly, um, has gone through the district and knows the, the needs of that district specifically, on that, I must support my colleague and vote aye. Moya. Permission to explain my vote, Chair? Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I just really want to express uh, uh, how uh, upset I am about uh, 
how quickly this came to the floor uh, to a vote without uh, the proper process here. Um, these are big decisions that we have to make, and uh, they're never easy. Uh, some of this needed to have much further discussion. Um, but to me, uh, when we have a developer that has been clearly a bad actor when it comes to good jobs, uh, I also think that it is our role to protect workers uh, and create housing and not sacrifice one for the other. Uh, and for that reason, I will be voting no. On the uh, LU. On all of those, you're I, right? Yes. Powers. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll affiliate myself with prior comments from other colleagues, which is that uh, while some of this I agree with, and I also agree with with the uh, with Councilor Moya around the the process and the expedition of of, of having to uh, to make a decision on this, and you know coming to the, some of the, some of the details to it as we are approaching the vote, and, and certainly disappointed that Phipps wouldn't be here either. Uh, certainly, other applicants are here to talk about uh, their application and their record, and we. Heard uh, a substantial amount of people who are affected by uh, by not this application, maybe particularly or or maybe, but certainly by activities in other parts of the city. Um, the uh, I, you know it's it's, it's dis disappointing to, to to continue to hear about the bad behavior throughout the city or near my district and around the city. Um, I certainly understand these applications and for the local member too are difficult and um, we are talking about uh, things like affordable housing. So I share you know, the concern and the comments of my colleagues as well. Thank you. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. So I am going to be voting aye on all with the exception of land use 99, the Rockaway Village um, application before the committee. And certainly I echo the sentiments of the chair and my Bronx colleague, Councilmember Cohen, uh, in understanding the lengthy, deliberate process that we've unfortunately been a part of as a Bronx delegation with Phipps Houses um, over the past year. Um, this stemmed from a development from Bronx County, so I feel compelled to speak speak up on it. Um, and certainly I understand the process as someone who went through a rezoning for three years, um, but as a member of this city council, certainly always hearing from my colleagues about issues within their district where they need my support or my opposition is very important. And so I do want to make sure that moving forward, all of our colleagues understand that we should not be told the day that there's a vote on the agenda uh, where many of our, our members stand. And I don't accept that. Um, and I don't operate like that and I don't expect anyone else to operate like that and when you talk about supporting working families and members of a union and giving them sufficient wages where they can live um, as someone who faces a saturation of shelters and many other supportive housing needs in my district it's always important to make sure that our members our constituents are a part of the development of real affordable housing and while I appreciate all of the work that's been done in the Rockaways and I know what that district has faced post Sandy and there is a lot of work that needs to be done and I do think that this project will make an impact and will make a, a difference um, but where we are in this committee um, I cannot support this right now and I will take the next few hours to think about it as we prepare for stated but certainly want to call out FIPS once again and their leader for not coming to a resolution on Cortland Corners. It's unacceptable that we still have that project in limbo with workers that are affected and we have to hear about everyday stories of what workers go through and yet Phipps continues to work with the city on other housing projects as if we're not going to continue to call them out for their practices. It's not right, it's not acceptable and in a city of millions and millions of people that need quality affordable housing, we want 
the right neighbors at the table. And as of this date, FIPS is not a good neighbor, and they need to be a better neighbor. And so I hope that if they're not here, they're listening. We are calling them out as a Bronx delegation, that we want them to come to the table and find a resolution with 32BJ. We are over a year, a year, talking about this issue, and yet we have no resolution. So I would say to HPD and everyone else, help us so that we can get to a conclusion on this matter so we can move forward. So with that, I am abstaining. I will not vote on Rockaway Village, and I will be voting aye on all the rest of the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just want to echo your con I just want to echo your concerns also. This was not brought to my attention that there was, a, that there was no understanding on this, uh, no agreement on this until about 2.30 yesterday afternoon when I began to try to find out more information about it. So I am also very upset about that process as well. And my form of protest was to remove my name as the sponsor of the legislation uh, to show that I am not um, happy about this situation. Uh, please continue with the, call, with the roll call. Combo. Councilmember Gibson really said everything that I would have ever wanted to say. So if I um, were to give a speech, it would just be uh, a repeat of what Councilmember Gibson has stated. I would just add that I'm also very disappointed that FIBS did not come here to face the workers and to face the council um, to bring further clarity to this particular situation. And I think that um, they have taken our support ultimately for granted, and I, I feel that they should come here and they should face the council and they should man up and woman up and look the workers in the eye and look at the members directly in the eye. I also want to state that I have a tremendous amount of respect for uh, Council Member Donovan Richards, and so all of this puts this, the way this was rushed through, uh, the way protocol was not followed, this puts everyone um, in a horrible situation, um, wanting to be supportive of a member who's worked tirelessly uh, to build the, rebuild the Rockaways and to have a tremendous amount of support there. But the way this was brought forward is just something that I too will need the next few hours uh, between now and stated uh, to talk with my colleagues in government, um, to think about this, and to uh, make a decision at stated. So I too um, will be abstaining um, from LU 99 at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Grudenczyk. Thank you very much. Um, I, too, uh, want to join with the rest of my colleagues in saying how I am dis disturbed that this matter has gotten to this point. Um, I do know that the great work that Donovan Richards has done um, in his district um, is a district that was suffering long before Sandy. Um, and he has performed several small miracles down there, and uh, the Rockaways, uh, his end of the Rockaways, are beginning to move forward. Um, and while I am troubled, I am going to vote to move this out of land use, uh, out of finance right now. So I am eye on all, except for Resolution 360. So that's a no. All items on today's finance agenda have been adopted by a vote of 10 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, no abstentions with the exception of the following bills. Resolution 360 is adopted by the committee, eight in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions, and land use item 99, which is adopted by the committee, seven in the affirmative, one in the negative, and two abstentions. Okay, thank you, um, Billy Martin, and with that, this meeting is adjourned at 11 a.m. in the morning. <laughs>